What's up? Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to talk about financial services. Drop in the comments and let me know where you are tuning in from. <clears throat> Make sure everybody who is registered on the event page is here for LinkedIn for Financial Services. I'm going to have to just double check on LinkedIn that everything's working smoothly. We'll get started very, very shortly. The sooner you jump in the chat, the quicker that we can get started. I want to make sure that everyone's from the event pages here. Okay, yep, they sure are. Drop in the comments, guys. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Let's do some networking. Um, I'm glad we can do this. Uh, well, I, the reason I organized this... Um, hello, Lisa. <laughs> Hey, you man, how are you? Brisbane? So we've got people from the UK, people from Brisbane. Where, who else we got on the call? I know most of you are gonna be on LinkedIn because we've organized a LinkedIn event. Um, so financial services is an industry I have been around for all of my life. Um, and I've got this report here from Greenwich Associates, um, which is about investing in the digital age and social media and how it relates to, particularly for investors. It talks a lot about inst institutional investors, um, but there's also been a lot of research that's been released by LinkedIn specifically about the financial services industry. And I've always been a big believer in that LinkedIn marketing for financial services, mainly because it's so competitive to market uh, financial services business online these days. Um, like with Google advertising, for example, you're competing with a lot of the banks for clicks and so on, which makes it a lot harder um, to compete because their average value of a client is so high, AdWords is really expensive. Search engine optimization is really competitive, right? Um, so let's move a bit closer to the mic here. Who else we got on the call, guys? Jump in the comments. I know there's a bit of a delay. Um, so hopefully we're... I'm just going to double check. Yeah. I'll just... Oh, here we go. <laughs> You've got Brian there, I can see. I know they just pop up randomly on LinkedIn as you sort of type them in. Um, so I've sort of earmarked financial services as an industry that I was going to focus on early on in my business um, because of that reason. And it's a networking site. It's trust-based, right? Um, sorry, it's a trust-based industry. And so it's always going to be important to establish relationships um, what this, this data is really interesting to me because LinkedIn has now got 706 million members. We know a few things about it and I'll go, I'll go into some of the stats here. Hey guys. Hey, Tommy, how are you from Nigeria? Welcome. Hey, Amber, good to see you again. I saw you last night on Monday night live. Hey, Daps from Newcastle, UK. Hey, Julia from Brisbane. Shivani, okay, we'll keep going. Um, we've got some stats, but I'll just give you like a high level overview and then I'm gonna share some slides with you, go through a bunch of statistics and research and, and what I suggest that you should do about it um, in the financial services industry when it comes to, to LinkedIn. We know it's LinkedIn has the uh, highest income demographic out of any of the social media platforms. We know it's out of all the big social media platforms, it's the place that First of all, for business to business, it's also the place that, uh, uh, well, it's the only business social media site, right? So it's a very unique website because it's business, but it's social. Um, and we also know that key decision makers uh, trust the content on LinkedIn a lot more. Um, but um, in the last few years, session time, the CEO of LinkedIn went on CNBC and, and announced that, um, you know, they had record profits and they've been growing every year, single year uh, their, their profits since the Microsoft acquisition four or five years ago when uh, LinkedIn was acquired for 26 billion. And, we, we, you know, to, which is more than what Google paid for YouTube. So it was, a, it was a big investment for Microsoft, but Microsoft had got over a billion users. You know, um, LinkedIn's now got 706 odd million 
uh, members was the latest statistic. It's probably higher than that now. And, and it's always been growing at an average of two members every second. So the, the, the user base is growing, but that it's not the most important, well, not so much, it's not the most interesting statistic to me. What is most interesting is the CEO on CNBC said, session time, which is the amount of time that the average user will spend on the platform has tripled. So if they were spending an hour before, now they're spending three hours, whether that's a day or a week, whether they're spending three times as much. And so you wonder like, how, how much of the time on there is going into producing content or, or is it consuming content? And this, the research has showed, and I'll, which I'm going to go into very shortly, that people, are, um, decision makers and investors are using it to make financial decisions, to make investment decisions, to, to establish trust, you know. Um, and uh, so we, we, yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen with you. Very surely, I just want to welcome Thulasi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thulasi or Thulasi. Melbourne from Shivani. Sorry, Mel Shivani from Melbourne, I should say. Jack from Manchester. It's good to see a few people from the UK. It's awesome. All right, let me share my screen with you. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see LinkedIn for financial advisors up on the screen there. I'm just going to alt tab, make sure everything's working correctly. Yeah, that look, oh, it looks like it's still. Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's get stuck into it. So at the end of this online training, I'm going to give away a LinkedIn starter pack which has a few resources in it that you might find useful. So company page best practices. So best practices for, for a company page, a lot of what we're talking about today will be in relation to your personal profile. So company page best practices uh, will be handy for you to have as well. So important to establish credibility that you set up your company page in the correct way. And, and then I'm going to give you a prospecting kit, which has some scripts and templates in it that we've tested and pr are proven to work across a variety of different um campaigns in the financial services industry and in, and also in other industries as well for connection requests and sending messages to set appointments and things like that and then for setting up your personal profile i've got an 18 step checklist so stick around to the end for that free gift um for those of you that haven't come come across myself before um my name is nathaniel bibby and i have worked with um well, I've worked with over 20,000 businesses now, but these are the ones that, um, some, or these are a handful of them. Um, you can see that I've worked with some of the banks, different financial groups, accounting groups, foreign trade exchange, like mortgage brokers. Um, yeah, so I've done a lot in the financial services space, like BT Financial was a big one um, because we would present to all of their licensees. We've got about, well, they had about 700 licensees. They've, I think they've dissolved BT and rolled it into Westpac now. I'm not sure exactly, but um, yeah. So, you know, we obviously started working with a lot of small businesses as a result of that because we were presenting to the licensees. Um, so <laughs> this dude here on the, on the right, might be your left, I'm not sure. No, it should be your right. It, that little guy there, that's me when I was, I don't know, I've just been about six years old there. Six or seven, maybe. I think, it's, yeah. We just moved to Hong Kong. So my dad was in financial services. He uh, started one of the um, leading boutique investment management companies in Hong Kong around that time. And, um, you, you know, the downside of that, I mean, he was very successful, don't get me wrong. Like, my dad was, my dad's a brilliant entrepreneur and a brilliant salesperson. Um, and a brilliant dad, but um, he did catch about 70 or 80 flights a year uh, and he would fly to Dubai, Europe, America, Australia, um, all around Asia quite a lot to, to visit clients. And so I constantly saw him networking and I remember, you know, I used to, we, we lived on an island off of Hong Kong and um, there was about a 30 minute commute to the, to the main island where, you know, dad had his office and we went to school on the island. It's called um, Lantau Island, Discovery Bay, if any of you have been to Hong Kong. And uh, like we would go down, me and my sister would go down to the ferry pier to meet dad when he'd come home from work, you know. Um, you know, so, like, so sometimes, you know, um, we'd go down there and he's missed the ferry. And like, I just remember him being away a lot. And then when I was 10 or 11, I went to boarding school here in Perth, Australia. Um, 
And so just watching him, and I, I would like see all these like printouts he'd have for like the charts he was looking at and stuff, and I didn't understand any of it. But I did think to myself as I was growing up, there must be a better way to grow a business than flying around the world visiting clients all the time. <clears throat> um, and I, you know, studied digital marketing uh, from a very young age, and I did marketing at university. I wouldn't necessarily say that I learned much about digital marketing at, at university, but um, I've always been fascinated by it. I started multiple businesses while I was at university. Um, you know, back then, search engine optimization was a big deal, and um, you know, I started to see the internet as a way that it that could um, could could allow you to network without having to be there face to face, I guess. And, and when social media came along, I, I could see that that was just going to amplify the situation. And LinkedIn, you know, obviously being a business site, I decided it was a platform for me. And, and I could never have anticipated what has happened in the last couple of years with COVID-19 and everybody being forced to work from home for at least for a period of time. A lot of the world still is working from home. And I don't think, you know, we're going to go back to the to where we were before. Um, so it's become actually imperative now to network online. Um, and you know, that's where it started. I sort of had this obsession from a very young age. Um, wh when I moved into digital marketing uh, in my career, in, in, I worked for a company that was expanding from Perth to Melbourne. Um, I discovered LinkedIn marketing. I decided to target, well, I asked my boss, I said, what's the best target market for LinkedIn? Uh, sorry, not for LinkedIn, for, for online marketing. That's what we were selling. And I was a salesperson. I was the first employee in the Melbourne office. And there was about 12 people in Perth and he just started the Melbourne office. And um, he, he said, oh, look, the best uh, clients that we have are medical practitioners, whether they be dentists, cosmetic surgeons, um, or what else was there? Those were the main ones, cosmetic surgeons and dentists. And um, he said, those pay the most, they constantly need new leads and you know, they've got the money to, to pay, uh, pay for a you know, good website, good search and optimization. So I thought, okay, <clears throat> being new to the industry, you know, like I wasn't gonna necessarily get a lot of good quality leads from the, the company. Um, the boss would take some of the <clears throat> really good leads, quite often the surgeons and the dentists. Um, and you know, I'd get the Melbourne leads, the ones that at the start, you always get the leads that, you know, that you don't get the best leads because you can't prove that you haven't proved that you can convert them. But I decided to be proactive about it. And so I made a list of all of the cosmetic surgeons and all of the dentists that are in Melbourne. And I started by going to visit um, by about 20 of them or so, like walking into 20 clinics and meeting the practice manager, which sits at the front desk and saying, hey, I'd like to speak to the surgeon about his online marketing. Um, I soon learned that the practice manager wasn't going to let me speak to the surgeon. This was their job. It was to basically keep you know pe people like me, the salespeople, from speaking to these surgeons because they make a lot of money and everyone wants to sell to them. So, um, so I tried calling. I tried you know using my telephone skills. I have quite a, quite a bit of experience in telephone sales at the time, um, and couldn't get past the practice manager again. And it was just was just around about the time that I'd set up my LinkedIn profile and I had a picture of me. Um, I had the well, same picture that I use on Facebook. It was me in a nightclub going like this. <laughs> and um, I decided to use it to reach out to these surgeons. And in the first week that I, I tried this, I contacted 10 surgeons. I spoke to six of them on the phone. I had meetings with four of them over the course of the month. And I made one sale in the first month that I was working for this company. Um, but it was a sale. For, the website that I sold was for $24,000. Um, so when we went to the sales meeting, you know, I didn't really know, I, I thought I'd done a good sale, but a lot of the other salespeople in Perth had made more sales than me, like 10 sales, 15 sales. But it turned out that I'd actually closed the most business for the month just by closing one sale. Because this is the thing, guys, if you, if you get the ideal client, obviously the average transaction size will be larger. Um, and so you don't need as many deals. A lot of the other guys were like getting eight or nine sales, but you know, the, the average transaction may have been two or $3,000, but I was getting the ideal client. So, I, so the next month I, I sent out 20 messages to surgeons and I made two sales. Um, and it wasn't long before the boss said to me, hey, do you want me to hire you an assistant so they can do the appointments on LinkedIn for you and you can just do the meetings. And so I, I, all of a sudden I was doing like six or seven meetings every single day and I was closing a lot of business. Um, this is what this is how we grew that company. We went from um, 
well, just one employee in Melbourne and um, about 12 in Perth. And by the end of uh, 18 months, we had 120 staff members. And about 60 of those were in Perth with open offices in other cities as well, L- largely off the back of LinkedIn. This is, all, this is about nine years ago now. Um, and when the company decided to do a backdoor listing on the stock market and all that st- sort of stuff, I, 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 um, it became quite complicated. And I decided to set up my own business offering LinkedIn marketing and LinkedIn training to companies. And we were the first company in Australia to do that. Um, and, you know, over the years, over the last eight, nine years, I've learned, uh, I've worked in so many different industries that I've learned the skills in it to um, be able to, I don't know, give, give the right strategy. I've tested and measured pretty much everything. A um, couple of just common misconceptions here. So people say being successful on LinkedIn means spamming your network. Just a second. Just put the light on. So you don't have to spam your network, right? <laughs> like, and another one, I already have lots of LinkedIn connections, so I don't need any more help. So, so having a lot of LinkedIn connection doesn't tell me very much about your experience on LinkedIn. There's a lot of people that come to my training and events that say, oh, Nathaniel, you know, I've got 5,000 LinkedIn connections. And they might not say, I don't need your help, but they might say, you know, my experience is, well, they, they generally don't say my experience. Generally, they just say LinkedIn is, is crap because I get all these sales letters and I get, I get people offering me jobs, but there's no clients using it because I never get any messages from clients. And what that tells me is when they're on LinkedIn, they're being reactive. You know, somebody sends them a connection request, they accept it because they want to grow their network. And that's probably why they've got 5,000 connections, but they're not being proactive. They're not deciding who's going to be in their network. So if you want to target accountants, you've got to be proactive about searching for accountants and sending them connection requests. So that, so your network is controlled and it's all people in your target audience. It's a massive mistake, massive mistake. I don't know, I can go into this in more detail shortly, but we've got to keep moving because there is a lot of content to go through today, guys. Um, who else we got on the call now? There's a few more people. We got oh, Chris, Anthony, welcome. Good to see you. By the way, as we're going, I, I encourage you to drop in the comments and, and let me know uh, if this is relevant and also if you have any questions because this is the benefit of being live is that I can interact with you. Um, so please do drop your feedback. And whether you agree with me or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments because I think Social media, as you know, this this live is on social media, is all about having conversations. Um, so rather than me just talking and dumping information, let me know if I'm giving you the right information, whether you've got any questions, whether you disagree with any of it, if you had a different experience. Um, I think that would be really beneficial for the whole group. Um, you know, LinkedIn won't work for B2C, only B2B. I don't believe that to be true. Well, I know it not to be true. Um, it's all about strategy, you know, because if in Australia alone, there's 12 million members on LinkedIn, which is about half of our population from the guys tuning in in the UK. Um, you know, in the world, 706 million. So it does work for B2C. You just got to be strategic about it. Seven in 10 financial advisors are already using social network for business purposes. These stats are a bit out of date. I reckon it's higher than that now. Nine in 10 financial advisors who use social networks turn to LinkedIn. Um, just for those of you that are... Uh, targeting investors, just give you some more stats here. So this, this was uh, Greenwich Associates interviewed 277 institutional investors in 2018, and 86% of investors say they take action on content they receive, with 41% doing so at least weekly. 63% of institutional investors now consume social media, while less than half regularly consume financial-specific trade publications. This is amazing. 68% of investors use social media to research asset management firms in 2018, which is up from 36% in 2015. So it's, it's doubled in three years. How, much, how many people are you going to social media to research asset management companies? 59% of respondents spend on average 15 to 30 minutes reading a single piece of content, which is a long time. It's a lot longer than what the general stats are, isn't it? When you, when you hear the general stats, they're like two, three minutes. These guys are spending a lot more time. Now, let me know in the comments if this is true, but is it... Do you, um, have you ever been to a meeting and, and Googled or link, uh, searched on LinkedIn or Twitter the person's name to, to find out a little bit of background about them? I mean, especially like if you're going if you're in a trust-based industry like financial services, it's so important that, you, you know, the, the, the person that you're dealing with 
has some credibility. So we're we getting active in the comments, guys. I'm just want to make just make sure that I'm doing my job to give you some encouragement. Um, I know they take a bit of a while to come through on this platform, but yeah, keep the questions coming in. I'm going to be checking periodically. Now this is as this is this is a long time ago, 2013. Morgan Stanley lands a 70 million dollars account. I think this is a lot more common these days. I mean, if there's anyone tuning in that has closed um, some business on LinkedIn, let me know in the comments because I'm going to keep I'm going to keep telling you that you have to be on there and it, it works um, unless you guys already uh, are, are already at a stage and you're already active and you already believe it. So these are the things you can use LinkedIn for to acquire new clients, regain trust, lead with insight, grow relationships. It's all about influence. You know, there's these different stages of the customer journey. Let me bring this up. So we know we've got the awareness stage at the start, right? <clears throat> so that's when like, they identify that they have a need, whether it's for an investment manager, for a mortgage broker, for what have you, right? But if you're... If you're a LinkedIn connection and they've been seeing your insights and you've been creating content for the awareness stage of the customer journey, it's likely that they'll be you'll be the person that they'll think of, right? Um, if your profile is optimized, it'll be constantly showing up in their newsfeed, and then that's where they actually move to to research who they're going to do business with. It doesn't matter if you're a financial advisor, doesn't matter if you're <coughs> in investments or you you're a startup looking to raise capital. <coughs> it, well, these trust-based decisions that involve finances, uh, LinkedIn a, is a big part of it. And, and what's interesting is after they convert, right, after they become a new client and they're onboarded, it says here, like in stage five is relationship strengthening. The investor seeks validation of their decision and their ongoing relationship with the, with the, um, with the service provider to, con to consider further investments and just to justify the decision so they can refer you know, friends and so on. So it's important even for people that are already clients, not just for new clients. So if you're not connected with your existing clients, make sure you take the time to do that on LinkedIn because it will strengthen your relationship with them. Look at this, social networks used for business. Among financial advisors who use social media, 91% of them, their preference is LinkedIn. This is the reasons that they're on there, reasons for using LinkedIn, improving the effectiveness of their referral network, cultivating client prospects, building brand identity, enhancing current client relationships, expanding professional knowledge base and cascading thought leadership. LinkedIn reports that three of five advisors use LinkedIn have gained new clients as a result. So let me know if that's true in the, in the comments. You know, nearly a third of those brought a million dollars plus in assets under management, and that would be US dollars. I have a feeling that comments are coming through in a bit of, bit of a delay. It's the last comment I got. Come on, guys, on LinkedIn. I know, I know you're there because I saw you on my mobile. So I'll make, make sure you're... Um, I'll check my phone in, this, in a minute just to make sure I'm not, the delay is not um, causing the comments not to come through. So first and foremost, this is the first thing I want to talk to you about today. And, I, and we, we can only cover so much, but these are the fundamentals I think is well most important. Profile optimization. So there's a, there's a little graph there that shows the difference in profile views after a profile has been optimized for keywords. And you can see like it's gone from zero to literally 232 profile views, 1,471% weekly change after we optimize this lady's profile. Here's, here's a dude. Um, Unbelievable, the other boys are impressed, he said in his email. Again, you can see it jumping up from about eight views to, what is it, 50, 60 or something. Um, he's in commercial finance. TSD Advisory, Melbourne-based financial advisory firm, uh, jumped to the top 4% you know, in their network of profile views. Um, he, he generated 23 leads in his first month with, it was with lawyers and medical practitioners as well. Lawyers and medical practitioners, 23 appointments. And obviously, you know, in his firm, financial advisory firm, a client is, you know, it's worth, I'm not sure exactly how much it's worth, but I know it's worth a lot to him. Um, certainly very happy with the results. And that was just in the first month, you know. Um, he, he continued to run that strategy uh, after we'd run that one month for him um, internally. And still, you know, he still uses that strategy today. Ashwin Reddy. So the most important thing is, well, I mean, 
I guess I'm saying the obvious, but I need to say it because, you know, if this is missed, it doesn't work. Your profile photograph, of course, um, you know, makes things stand out. So make sure you get a professional headshot. And if you can, try and make it a little bit different than what the stock standard financial advisor's headshot. <laughs> so it's worth getting a good photographer. This is an area that is worth investing in. Since babies, we're trained to seek out, you know, look at people's eyes. The face draws our attention. So it's really important to get a headshot that, you know, you can see the eyes. Um, it looks professional, but also try and make it stand out a little bit. Okay. You want to optimize your headline. So while you're looking at that, I'm just going to see if I can see a bit more on LinkedIn here. So I don't see money comments coming through, which makes no sense because we had about 300 people registered. Let's have a look here. Is there any of you that have come through the event page? Please let me know in the comments. I'm not sure it's streaming properly. So 200 odd people. Oh yeah, I can see myself there. Oops. Maybe we need to send out a few reminders. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll keep going. Um, I'm going to get the recording sent out to everyone um, in any event. All right, so headline. Now what most people have in their headline is their job title, right? And the job title may not be very, uh, may not explain what you do very well to your clients. Uh, thanks guys I appreciate that it's very helpful awesome thank you very much um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me you want to have keywords in there with like Ashwin for example um, he said in his headline uh, I help SMSF specialist oh, so, no I am an SMSF specialist and then he had the name of his firm and then he was director I think having a director does give you some authority um, if you especially if you're contacting other directors um, but you want to explain what it is that you do. So like TSD Advisory, his firm name, didn't really explain what exactly he did. And so putting, you know, SMSF specialist, financial services in there as keywords as well, first of all, helped him to be, to rank for those keywords in the search results. But secondly, um, it, it tells people what you do. Because we're, we're going back to that slide before where we had the photographs. You can see, you see the photograph and you see the headline. So you can imagine those two parts are really important when people see you know, a diff, uh, list of profiles in the search results or your profile just pops up somewhere. <clears throat> it's not until they click on it that they actually get to see some of this other stuff. Um, the next most important thing, oh, Amber's on Facebook, that's cool. <laughs> oh, thanks Amber, that's, that's really helpful. Oh, okay, good, we'll, we'll keep smashing on. All right, so connections is the next thing. So you've got photograph, you've got headline, now connections. Now, oh, I, when I say connections, I mean relevant connections, right? Um, you, when you get over 500 plus, like we run campaigns where we're, we're doing appointment setting for clients and we find that the conversion rates jump by at least 15% when the client has over 500 connections. So we, we like to build up the network so it gets to 500 connections. Um, and, you know, and just want to let, let you know, because you may walk away and say, well, I just need 500 connections, but you need relevant connections for other reasons. So I, I would definitely not just be accepting everyone just to get to 500. I'd just be proactive with, you know, building your network, sync up your database. Um, you know, like if you go to, there's a, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's videos on how to do everything, every single thing I'm mentioning. So if you go to my YouTube channel, there'll be a video on how to import your email contacts. You know, um, so check that out uh, because a lot of people do know, you know, have done this already. So I don't, I don't want to go into it in the webinar. We've got too much to go through. But um, yeah, check that out if you need to. And then you've got your contact information so that when people are searching with geographic terms in their search phrases, so like they may look for financial advisor Sydney, in which case, like you need to have your, you know, your address in there so that you show up for the Sydney search results. Um, and and if there's any questions around this as we go, by the way, jump, jump in the comments um, and let me know. Because uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, may be basic to some of you and not to others. And I just kind of want to gauge, you know, how quick I should be going. Um, register your LinkedIn web address. So that's your URL, like linkedin.com forward slash IN and then it's forward slash. And, and it'll just be like numbers and letters if you haven't customized it. So you'll, you'll, you'll be able to tell. Um, but if, 
if you uh, customize it, it should be your first and last name. What, that, what all that'll do is when people do search for your name on, on Google, <clears throat> you're likely to show up at the top of the search result because LinkedIn look at things like the URL. Uh, sorry, sorry, Google looks at the URL when it's determining where to rank pages. You'll often notice, like if you search for whatever keyword you search for, you'll notice that, that, that when you click on the link of the highest, um, the websites that are highest in the search results, generally they have the keyword you just typed in their URL. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Alex. Welcome. <clears throat> okay. Add your websites. Website links will help with your SEO as well. Okay, so now your about section, they, they've changed the name from summary to about, is, is basically the bit of, the, of text at the top of your LinkedIn profile. Now, if anyone's going to read any part of your profile, they're going to read the about section. And so I, I know you can't read you know, what I put on the screen, or you might not be able to read it, and that's okay. I just wanted to show you how it's spaced out. Um, you know, I've got quite short paragraphs. I've got bullet points in there, and then you always want to finish with a call, look, not a, well, a call to action, but it doesn't have to be like a salesy thing. It's just telling people what to do next. You need conversion points on your profile. So if you're getting a, people looking at your profile, but you're not getting any inquiries, it's probably because you haven't invited them to do to make an inquiry. So you can ask them to visit your website or, or to message you on LinkedIn or connect with you on LinkedIn. Just tell them what to do next. A lot of people miss that step. Um, in your experience section, you also want to use the the title, the job title there, as a um, similar to your headline. Put keywords in there, um, and then just fill out like you know, add media, add publications, get testimonials, all that kind of stuff. Like it just gives LinkedIn what it wants, which means it's going to show you to more people. <clears throat> um, I just published a video this morning on uh, how to get LinkedIn recommendations on YouTube. But you know something that a lot of a lot of financial advisors don't take the time to do, and in trust-based industry, when people are looking at your profile, there's nothing better than having uh, your clients do the selling for you. You know, um, so it, it's very <clears throat> it, it's it's something that like just takes a little bit more work because you know the the client actually has to submit the recommendation. <clears throat> but it's worthwhile doing because of that reason as well, because a lot of your competitors won't be. Uh, if you want to know how many recommendations that you should have, it's more than your competitors <laughs> and try and get them from your clients. People will be able to tell if you get them from your mum and the person that sits across from you at work. <laughs> yeah, and what's interesting is if you do look at my profile and you look at the recommendations, you'll see a lot of those profiles that are recommending me are optimized and so you can always use them as a bit of a... Some examples, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got about a hundred and, hundred and something now in this particular screenshot, it only says 27, so it's <laughs> from a while ago. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so with the content stuff, positioning yourself as a thought leader, you can, like you don't necessarily have to make it about your business. Um, I, I posted about uh, a client that, that did some crowdfunding and raised over a million dollars in three weeks. We were a part of the campaign, but you know, sometimes like even just, I think this, this, he was in the West Australian and it was actually a, a result of um, me sharing a picture of, of the two of us and Ez Chandra from Glide Agency who did the Facebook ads and we were just having a drink and, and we said, I said in the post, you know, congratulations, Tiller Rides have raised a million dollars, you know, in, in a f three weeks. Um, great to be a part of the campaign. Obviously, you know, like I wasn't the only part of the campaign they were doing a lot to raise money in that time but i was part of it and i and the uh, you know the other um the the founder and and the other uh, marketing agency didn't didn't post about it right away but i did um so it got a lot of attention um because people love success and inspiration on on linkedin um so it got a lot of attention a lot of comments a lot of people congratulating um julian the founder and, and you know the rest of us and uh it caught the attention of the west australian newspaper and so they then published an article about you know the success and so i, I actually this post is is me posting about um you know the west australian and so on um you know it builds buzz you know the crowdfunding campaign if you use it right and you you post on social media but for, from my perspective like uh, uh, the reason i'm telling you this is because your content doesn't necessarily have to be about you it can be about your clients and their wins and what they're doing and and it can be about other businesses your partners you know your employees 
Uh, because I actually got uh, 40 something leads, 47, I think it was 47 leads. And I didn't even say a that I was part of the campaign or to talk about myself at all or even what I do. Um, and I didn't even have a call to action. I didn't even say like message me if you want, you know, help with your crowdfunding. I didn't say any of that. I just congratulated him um, and said, you know, I was uh, really pleased to be a part of it. And I got 47 private messages from businesses that were currently looking to raise money on LinkedIn, right? Just by the fact that I posted it, um, makes it just makes you look like the the authority. And of course, like if somebody's looking to raise money and they see that, they you know they're going to think, oh, maybe you could do that for my business too. Um, and so they've come up with the idea. So they want they're the ones that are like come up with the idea to contact you. You haven't even asked them. Which means obviously the conversion rate with those deals are a lot is a lot higher, and I've worked with several of uh, startups now that are doing crowdfunding campaigns as a result of you know, really just kicked off from posts like this. Um, so you can all be thinking of how to do that to position yourself as a thought leader. A lot of people think you have to be like you have to win awards and and you have to you know I don't know make millions and millions of dollars or be on TV in order to be able to post inspirational stuff. And it's just not the case at all. There's inspiration all around us. Um, and you've just got to get in the mindset of giving. And if you give through a post or you give value through talking about, it doesn't even have to be somebody you know. It could be talking about a politician or talking about something you saw on TV or, you know, so, um, but, but that is inspirational for people. If it's an inspirational story, they'll engage with it. And because you're the one that shared the information with them, quite often they'll see you as an authority in that area. <clears throat> uh, oh, this was the first week of his campaign. We would jumped profile views quite a lot. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about lead generation. Lead generation. If you're generating leads on LinkedIn, you want to be quite specific with who you target. So you want to use the advanced search feature. You don't need premium to do this. You don't need sales navigator. And then you want to put in keywords in different areas of the advanced search criteria um, for people you're looking for. So you might be looking for, um, let's say you are looking for dentist, people with dental clinics. And so you would put the industry would be medical practice, you know, the um, job title might be might be director and then you may put in capital letters O-R or. So you could put director or dentist. And then you might want to pick the geographic region, whether it's Melbourne, Sydney, London, Manchester, Singapore, South Africa. You get the idea. And so be really granular with who you're targeting. You know, because as you get more connections in that industry, you will find more people. It's not like if you get 100 people in the search results and that once you've connected with those 100, that's it. You you connect with those 100, let's say 40 of them accept the connection request. You've got 40 new connections in that industry. Just because you've got those 40 new connections and they'll have such a wide network that, that, that they're going to bring into your second degree network, then when you do the same search, you'll actually find more people in the search result. You're not going to run out of people. Very rare that you know we have an industry that specific where we run out of people. So there's a three-step process for generating leads: find, connect, and engage. Find is very important. You've got to be targeted, and then you, and then you've got to connect with them. These days, you can only send a hundred invitations every single week on LinkedIn. There's a limit, so you, your connection requests can't just be just some generic rubbish that you're sending sending out to loads of people. You know they're getting everyone's getting so many connection requests these days from salespeople. You've got to stand out, and that means being personalized. If you're looking to use automation on LinkedIn, forget it. I mean, you could use it, but how many people are you going to annoy on the way to get a lead? You could, well, it's hard to see if something's not working when it's working. And what I mean by that is if you are getting leads from it, you don't know how many you're missing out on, you know, by being this generic and, and salesy. So every message you should you send on LinkedIn, whether it's a connection request or a message, it can't assume that the person you're speaking to has the problem that you solve or needs what you do. Because a lot of people won't necessarily want to switch a financial advisor. So a lot of people may be broke and you don't know it or they may not, you know, whatever reason that, you know, they may not be an ideal client. You just don't know enough information if, if they're, you know, a new contact. So what a better thing to do is would be to send them a connection request when they accept and ask them some questions. And and to be honest, like the best way to ask questions is, is actually on the telephone. 
Um, so I'd be suggesting that they, they um, get on a call with you and, and uh, being, um, and so you can ask them some questions. <laughs> Case study. My friend Maureen. Maureen and I have worked in the real estate business before. Uh, we've done some investments together and she sells Australian new developments, new projects in Singapore, right? So they're Australian projects, but she lives in Singapore. She sells to Singaporeans. And, and she said to me, oh, it's a shame that LinkedIn is just B2B because, you know, I would love to be able to work with you. And, and I said, well, Maureen, you know, it could work for B2C as well. You know, who do you target? And she's like, well, you know, a lot of the guys that buy property in uh, Australia who are based in Singapore, they have some tie to Australia. And generally, they're like, you know, they may have a residency there. They may want to put money there that's, um, for when they retire. Um, a lot of them went to, um, you know, university in Australia. And I said, okay, stop right there. I've got enough information now. So let's target CEOs that live in Singapore that also the, the other criteria was that they went to university in Australia. And we actually, actually had to pick the specific university. So we went through each of the big ones like UWA, Monash and Curtin and blah, blah, blah. And identified on what CEOs and directors are based in Singapore that went to university here in Australia. So that's the fine step, you know. Oh, it within a few days, she or you know, double network and had ten qualified leads. So she, we, what we did is we invited them to an investment conference, a free investment conference, um, filled the room very easily. And Maureen's been using that strategy ever since. Um, these, are, so here you can see the breakdown of it. Um, the advanced search looks uh, a little bit different, but it's got, got the same fields. So, you know, located in Singapore, school, Monash University was the first one we did, title, director or CEO, industry, uh, we went as specific as industry as well. Okay, finance, legal, banking, yep. Uh, interested in, I wouldn't bother with that one these days just because it's not as accurate as it should be. Um, groups, you can, yeah, if you need to be more targeted than that, you could throw in a an, an group as well. Okay, so these are some messages, right? Hi, thank you for connecting. I've had a look at your profile. I wanted to touch base through my company. We specialize in helping many reach their financial goals. The reason I thought we should connect is we've had some success with other people that are in similar fields to yourself. It'd be good to line up a chat, learn more about your goals, and see if there's a fit to take discussion. That's a that's a really good message. I, <laughs> I, I yeah, we wrote that message, of course, for a financial services client. Um, short. It's all about the person we're sending it to. It's very professional, brief, shows confidence, it's personalized, um, and you know, is, is, is explained very, very well why they should have a conversation, but he's explained it in a way which, well, and obviously when I say he, I mean, <laughs> our company, I'm, I wrote this message, but um, I've explained it in a way that allows him to make his own interpretation as to what the call is about. So like I haven't said like, oh, it's a financial health check where we're gonna talk about this investment, this investment. Like I've just said, look, you know, we've had some success. Um, I'd like to learn more about your goals to see if there's a fit. So you're not selling to somebody unless they're a good fit. Um, as soon as you get permission, they tell you, oh, you know, my financial advisor's crap, I, wa I want help in this area. Then you can say, okay, would you like more information about how I can help you with that? But generally you're not gonna get that kind of level of detail or information or be able to even ask that question unless you're on the phone with them. That's when you keep control of the sales process. So you don't want to mention too much up front. You just want to focus on getting the next step, which is taking the conversation offline. Boom. <laughs> I'm surprised that we haven't had more questions come through, ladies and gentlemen. Please do let, uh, is this helpful? Let me know in the comments because I, I really want to make sure that you guys all get value from this. Or are you, are you just being quiet because you're engrossed? <laughs> okay, this example, right, is one I got in my inbox. Hey, Nathaniel, hope you're doing good. I am. We are. We have helped shape up the business for more than 10,000 clients. Okay. So what's wrong with this message? 
Well, it's all about the person that's sending in, isn't it? So if you make the message all about yourself, no one is going to be interested because people are only interested in talking about what they already know or what they already know they want to know. What they already know, what they already know they want to know. If they don't already know that they want to know who this guy is, they're not interested. And it's very easy to ignore a LinkedIn message from somebody you don't know. So that's not a very good message. This one. Hey, I, I received this. I, sh I must have, hopefully I changed the name at the bottom. I don't think just a quick one to say thanks for accepting my invite. The idea is now we're connected. Hopefully we can find time for a face-to-face -face just to see if maybe my product might be of value to your clients. I'd really appreciate the opportunity. Look, I, I, like, I like a lot about this message. Like it's short, you know. Um, I don't like the word just, but that's a minor detail. The main, the main issue with this message is is when he said, we can find time for face-to-face -face just to see if maybe my product might be of value to your clients. He wants to sell to my clients. But like, I mean, if he was a, if he was somebody in a complementary industry and it's very similar to like if, if an accountant is connecting with a mortgage broker or an accountant with a financial services or financial services with a lawyer, where you have the capacity to refer each other clients, it's a great way to build, you know, your client base. You want to word it in the value that you're providing to the person you're sending the message to. So you want to say, we can find time for a face-to-face -face just to see if maybe your product might be of value to my clients. And he's going to jump at that, right? Because there's opportunity to grow his business. And obviously, one of your, when you're on the phone call, you say, look, one of our criteria is, one of the criteria um, when we're choosing a partner is, to, is that they also are able to, um, that, that, that our product is also a value to their clients. So, you know, would you like to know more about our product? So you, you still end up with the same outcome, but you're just wording it in the value of the person you're sending the message to. And it doesn't matter if it's referral partners or clients, you are always got to word it in a way that's not about what you want, it's about the person you're sending the message to. And, and you know, I'd really appreciate that opportunity. I mean, that's okay. I mean, I don't, I don't really have a problem with that, but technically, like, who cares, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I, I, I'm okay with that part. That part. I'm probably getting a bit too granular. But you want to test and measure things like that. Try it without that that part. Um, and just see what the results is. Because a lot, a lot of the discussion, you know, we can have a discussion around this and people go, oh, you know, I wouldn't respond to that message or, oh, I don't like that message. And, and, uh, and like, I can't argue with you. Like, I understand because not everyone replies to these messages. But there's a conversion rate. And so you've got to test and see what that conversion rate is and optimize for the conversion rate. But you don't want to make the mistake of assuming that everyone that you do business with is going to respond the same as you do. You've got to test it and measure it. And, and that's what I do with every single campaign. So when I recommend a message like this, I'm not doing it because I like it. I do it because out of everything I've tested over the years, that's what works the best. Oh, I, and by the way, sorry, this, this message in front of you is not one I, I wrote. I'm going to show you one that, what I have wrote in a, in a minute. Oh, actually, I wrote this, yeah. So, hi, John. I've had a look at your profile. I'm interested in catching up. We're seeking someone in the building industry who is serious about their growth objectives. And it seems like they could be an ideal fit. How are you placed for a telephone chat Thursday morning at 10 a.m.? Only customized field in that message is the first name. That could be sent out to lots of different businesses. But it seems like it's just written to him because you've made the time so specific. And it's short. I love that message. I absolutely love that message. It's a really good message. It, this, this actually saved the, the chap who sent this message. I've changed his name. But it saved his business. When, when he came on board, he was three months away from going under and, and we completely turned his business around. He actually had to reschedule, because we sent the same message out to so many people, he had to reschedule a lot of 10 a.m. appointments. <laughs> but it made it seem per personalized, you know? Oh yeah, Maureen's uh, message here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's very personalized. It's a bit long, long but... Um, because they're both in Singapore and you know it's, it's a community of expats there, it, it worked really well. And, and the interesting thing is we put at the end of this message, do you know anyone that would benefit from being kept in the loop on these kind of opportunities? So isn't that interesting how we haven't asked if they're interested? Because the chances are they are. Um, but it really takes the pressure off when you ask if, if anyone else would be. So it's just an idea. You don't, you know, obviously you don't always have to, to uh, you, you, want to, you want to incorporate quite a few ideas. It'd be a good idea to get this LinkedIn prospecting kit I'm going to give you guys at the end. Um, so I've just shared a few things with you. So how to leverage your LinkedIn profile to generate new customers, how to position yourself as the authority in your industry, and how to generate leads with targeted messaging. 
there's a couple of ways that um, you can go about it. You can you can do it yourself, or you can hire an agency to do it for you. Now, if you're doing it yourself, I, I can still support you with training, and I have a lot of free training on my YouTube channel and on my social media, but. What I found is if businesses want a quick outcome and they want to train people within their team, that uh, training is, a, uh, is the most effective if you're doing it yourself. And that could be online training or it could be you know, in-person customized. Um, online training courses are fantastic and because um, they talk, go through a process, right? So like you want to start in the right place. You don't want to be doing this and then that and that. You, want to, you want to go through so that you, you complete the modules and then at the end of it, you sort of, you, you've become um, qualified, if you like, for LinkedIn lead generation and LinkedIn marketing, um, or you can outsource it to a team like us and you know um, get it done for you, which I, I suggest doing. But you just got to be really careful with who you outsource it to. You got to make sure they're practicing what they preach. They're getting, they've you know, they've got an audience that's engaged and they're making sales from that audience and they're not manipulating this, the algorithm. You just got to ask the right questions. I think I've got a document. Where is it? I must be. If anyone wants this document on how to choose a LinkedIn marketing service provider, because if it's not with us, I just want to make sure that you don't make the mistake. Like a lot of, uh, I get, I was quite like, um, we've always had quite a lot of leads come through and we've been quite picky with who we work with. Financial services is an industry I like to work in because I know I can get strong results there. Um, but it, it would frustrate me when we didn't close a, bi a deal and then three years later I, I have someone come to my event and they said oh now we went with this provider and you know we've spent $150,000 and we haven't got anything to show for it and then I feel like I let them down because I didn't sell to them three years ago so you know contact um, contact me and I will give you that uh, document on how to choose a LinkedIn marketing service provider just tell you the right questions to ask so you can make a more informed decision I want to tell you quickly about LinkedIn Insider. Um, I do have a an offer for you. Um, I've just updated this training course. It's called LinkedIn Insider 2.0. Um, and these are the modules that it includes. But uh, the reason I've updated it is because LinkedIn so changed so much, I've had to put in brand new content. And within each of these training modules, there's generally three or four um, different uh, topics. So these are lessons and then within the those lessons are topics. Um, and then there's some bonus content as well about personal branding. So you've got building the foundation, like learning the fundamentals of LinkedIn, how to navigate the platform, all the basics, really important. This is um, the standout from the crowd, how to write a killer headline, how to use like the cover background in your, on your LinkedIn profile, how to build, um, build social proof and profile optimization. So how to rank at the top of search results, how to convert visitors to leads. How to, set, how to set up your profile so that when people come through it, they go through a customer journey and it speaks directly to them. And there's so much, so much that goes into that. You know, um, Social proof strategies. How do you build credibility? How do you build trust? How do you build um, recommendations? How do you build endorsements? How do you position yourself as the authority through content? And groups, LinkedIn groups. I don't see many people taking advantage of these, which is absolutely crazy. LinkedIn groups is a great way for you to be able to connect with a certain audience like that. Because all of a sudden, you've got access to every single member of that group who would never see your, see your profile or your content or be able to get messages from you normally. A lot of people join groups that are related to what they do. If you're a financial advisor, you probably join the financial advisory group, right? But what you want to do is join the groups where your clients are. You're part of that conversation. You share your content in there, and you can direct. Like, there's so many ways you can use groups. If you, if, if you, um, there's another tutorial in there about how to set up a LinkedIn group. Because once you've set up a LinkedIn group, you can you can alert everyone in that group once you post a new piece of content in there. So it's a very great way to get engagement on your content real quick. Um, and you can use uh, groups are just going to get better. They're going to become more important on LinkedIn. You've seen, you know, on Facebook that they're very popular. Um, LinkedIn is known for copying the best features of every platform. So it's only a matter of time before groups become way more interactive. I'll teach you um, how to grow your network without reaching that limit of 100 a week. There's several ways around it. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you in LinkedIn Insider how to do that. Um, engage key decision makers. So th this is where we go into like lead generation case studies, scripts and templates. <clears throat> um, social selling is actually all about telephone sales and how to close a deal, how to turn connections into sales. 
how to plan your content, set up a content calendar, how to create your content, batch create it. So in a couple of hours, you can create content for the entire month that's organized, that you can delegate, become a LinkedIn influencer, and, and then daily approach to success on LinkedIn. And also talk about how you can delegate certain aspects of community management and building your network as well. Um, and I'll throw in a, f- a few um, bonuses and downloads and things which will help you with the scripts and and case studies that are relevant. Um, and these are some of the outcomes that you know clients and graduates have achieved. Uh, this particular client doubled their sales revenue from month to month. Just in one month, they got over 100 leads from a LinkedIn campaign. And this is Maureen. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've talked about, and this was Ashwin. In the first three days of my campaign, generate 25, 300 leads. Yeah. So I've got 24 coaching videos. I mean, this is all created from my corporate training, which is, so if we were to do this live, it would be worth $14,000 to a business. Um, step-by-step video lessons, case studies, workbook checklist. Uh, private members group on LinkedIn with, where people share content with each other and, and network and, and set up referral partnerships. Uh, I will review your LinkedIn profile as part of your membership. And I'm giving you a $200 voucher, which expires. I've already set the expiration date. Um, it's all automated. It expires at midnight tonight. So if you'd like to become a member of LinkedIn Insider, today's the day to do it. If you tune in this webinar, it's your lucky day. That's the promo code down there, webinar in capital letters, dash VIP. Webinar dash VIP is the promo code you wanna use to get $200 off. So the the LinkedIn Insider program's $597, so that'd bring it down to $397, if my math serves me correctly. Um, Huge amount of value for for $397. Uh, Let me know if you do um, buy it. I'd be curious to to hear your feedback, and um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, yeah, I'd really like to hear it because I, I, this LinkedIn course, I believe, is the best on the mar- in the marketplace, and I, and I want to make it you know better and better, which is why I've just up- updated it um, to 2021. Um, so yeah, go go buy it, go buy it. LinkedIn is so v- valuable, and the organic reach is not going to last. It won't be the same any. It'll never be this good. You know, take advantage of it. Build trust with your networks and expand your network and generate leads and uh, join the online course or contact me for some face-to-face training and I'll help you get there faster. I've been through all the learning curves. Here's the link to get your free gift LinkedIn Starter Pack, which we talked about at the start. So you want to type in bibi.consulting forward slash starter dash pack to get your free LinkedIn Starter Pack. Um, That is... A wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for being here and uh, tuning in. And I wish you nothing but success with your LinkedIn marketing. Thanks for watching.